Thank you for joining us. This is Health Your Own Way Podcast, and I am your host, Mo Atkins. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about premenstrual dysphoric disorder and premenstrual exaboration disorder. Look, I said a lot. This lady is going to explain to us what these mean because it means like it's means something to me because I did some research, but it doesn't mean anything to me right now. So let me introduce my guest. First of all is Ali. She's a co-founder of PMD Collective, psychotherapist, a yoga therapist, and a registered mental health nurse. And I have another person, Emily. She's a co-founder of PMD D Collective as well, psychotherapist and a counselor. Ladies, I felt like I said a lot already. I felt like I've said a lot already. So first, and thank you both for joining me. I sincerely appreciate this conversation. Before we start, anything you guys want to add or say? Thanks for thanks for having us. Okay. Smooth. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, so <laughs> that said, correct me if I'm wrong with the words I just use. So pronounce it properly for the others that can understand it better than I am. So you said right, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and the other one is premenstrual exacerbation. Thank you. So let's start with this. What are we talking about? What do those words mean? Explain to me what those words mean. Do you want to go, Ali? I don't mind. <laughs> so yeah, um, PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, is a a mood a cyclical mood disorder um that's impacted by your natural sort of fluctuations um of hormones with, within your menstrual cycle so um yeah as as the the hormones are doing their normal thing someone with pmdd will be sensitive to that and so it brings a whole host of symptoms um both psych- psychological and physical um so yeah that's that's PMDD uh, in a nutshell. Um, premenstrual exacerbation is where you might have a um, a mental health issue, um, depression, anxiety, and it's an- exacerbated by your menstrual cycle. So in the weeks before your period, it feels much much worse. Mm. So oh. they they can be. I mean, you can also have both. You can have yeah. PMDD and PME. And PME is a new, a newish concept. It's it's not in the DSM five, which is a like diagnostic statistical manual. Is that right, Ali? Mm-hmm. Um, where everything is listed in a really dry way, with you know all the kind of different disorders and conditions of the world, with kind of things that tick it off. And PMDD is in there because it is a recognised disorder, but PME isn't but there's a lot of kind of focus now going on to that because there are a lot of people who've been misdiagnosed with PMDD um, and then have gone down to the final route of treatment which is a you know having your ovaries removed and a hysterectomy and they have not found uh, significant relief and it's kind of looked into and the reality is that they've had PME which is exacerbation which means you know made worse so things like yeah generalized anxiety disorder and stuff that throughout the month feel awful but for the two weeks at the end of your cycle so the the thing is it's 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 from uh can be from ovulation or come the lead up to ovulation till your period or even a few days after your period but it's majority of it is in the luteal phase which is the bit after you ovulate and so that's yeah pmdd and pme kind of show up in that point okay Ladies, I'm just taking a breath because I'm learning a lot. I guess the first thing for me is what is the difference between PMS? Because everybody has heard of PMS, like in a sense, because PMS is, you know, it's used in, in the society as some form of a negative, um, negative aspects. So how is it different from PMDD and PED? They got that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so many, so many acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> too much. I think, um, the severity of it is, is the biggest factor. So, you know, when we think about PMS or, you know, British people kind of historically called PMT, premenstrual tension, is, you know, you see it on TV, you know, you need to eat ice cream, you feel a bit grumpy, you might be a bit teary. It's, it's, it's low key, it's frustrating, but it's low key. And it's the brunt of jokes because it's, it's 
you know, it's funny. Oh, she's got, you know, she's her period's coming, that kind of thing. Like it's not, it's not life threatening. Whereas PMDD is. PMDD okay. comes with such significant symptoms that you know, depression that is is overwhelming. People who can't get out of bed, you know, they will be unable to function. They will not be able to go to work for for two weeks of the month for some people. There will be anxiety so extreme that they will be you know, racked with obsessive thoughts about stuff, you know, that everything's going to go wrong. Everybody hates them. There are, um, you know, there's physical stuff too, you know, like that you get with normal kind of PMS, like swollen breasts and stuff like that. But in addition, the kind of um, the, the, the mental impact I think is is the bigger ones generally but then there's the there's rage or irritability so people people with PMDD will get such rage that they will sometimes lash out they'll be violent you know we we know of people with PMDD that have have punched people have broken stuff who you know get into cars and have like road rage incidents we there isn't anything statistically done but we both strongly believe that if there was research done in prisons on women in prison the number of women who have committed violent crimes if they just track their cycles they may well see a link to that uh, and then the most significant symptom that is is completely different to pms is that 70 percent of people with pmdd experience suicidal ideation so that is the idea that they they don't want to live anymore that can take the extremes. I mean, and a thirty percent of people with PMDD have attempted suicide. Then I guess I'm a little shocked by what you're saying because then when I'm listening to you talk, then would it be fair to say a lot of times women that are going through the period or, or during that time or the cycle, they're being misdiagnosed as having like clinical depression or like or they're going crazy, and yeah. they could really be having some kind of issue. Yes. Yeah, respect. Okay. Because I'm listening to you talk and I'm just like, there's people out there that think they're crazy. And I'm just yeah. like, it could just be the great. Is there, I guess, is there a way to control it? Or is there something that we, that us women can do? If, if anybody's watching and listening and they're, they're relating to what you're saying, what can they do and how can they get help? Yeah, so there, there are things you can do. Um, there's treatments. Um, just just to pick up on this uh, the diagnosis thing and being misdiagnosed though so lots and lots of people that we work with are misdiagnosed with um sort of bipolar type 2 so the rapid cycling bipolar because it's a cycle (laughs) every Mm -hmm. month um yeah because like one day you're fine the next day like 30 20 days later what's wrong with this woman Right. Yeah. And then they don't know it's really to, sorry, I, I apologize. Please go ahead. Alan. No, no, that's fine. No, no, that's it's absolutely it's really right. <laughs> Get involved. Yeah. Uh, um, and the other one can can be um emotionally unstable um personality disorder. Um, because in the certain part of the cycle, yeah, there, there can be a lot of similarities there with the you know, unstable moods and yeah difficulties kind of regulating that so yeah there's a there are a lot of a lot of people out there who have been misdiagnosed um and and like you say might might just think they're they're going crazy because actually it's not really heard of um pmdd isn't well known um i've forgotten what you asked in the first place now so what can can you do is that was that it yeah (laughs) <laughs> like, is there a cure like what how they like take uh, a next step because before you even answer that question like i'm listening to you talk and i find that uh, even this kind of conversation is not even had in school and we talked about like i remember i heard about menstruation like no i even heard about menstruation until i was 12 or 13 i just got my period and nobody's sitting down telling you that these are possibly coming down the pipeline that you may experience this and if you experience this you know what maybe this could be like there's no education and I'm a grown woman, okay? I know I'm a grown woman. And this is the first time I'm hearing this from you both. And there's mm. a lot of women my age or even older and younger that may have gone through this and they're just like, they feel alone. I'm sorry. This is making me very passionate. Go ahead, Ali. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, again, again you're right. There, there's lots of people that don't find out, you know, until they're h- halfway through their lives that this is something that they're suffering with and they, they do feel alone. They do feel isolated. It's it's a really hard condition to live with and they 
they come when they realize they get those light bulb moments from things like this from you know listening to a podcast reading an article or like googling you know bad period symptoms and it coming up but they they come having felt like they were broken people that there's something terribly wrong with them that that's just who they are they're just an angry person or someone who can't cope or someone who can't be in a relationship because so many people with PMDD break up with their partners every month they're like I hate you like they will go from loving this person to hating them because their brain will just no hate this person and so they will break up relationships they will quit jobs Mm. and they come to you know to us or to you know the community feeling like there's something just terribly terribly wrong with who they are and that's heartbreaking because if they'd have been told like you say, in school, if there was a part of the education that said, you know, you're going to have your period, these are the things to look out for, not just you ovulate and you menstruate, because the only thing that women are for is to make babies. So you only need to know about when you ovulate and when your period is. But if even, we were, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, same. But even then, like if I if I go and research and look about my menstruation cycle, it doesn't occur to me there's actually disorders out there that is related to my period. So like I can't search or find information out there because I'm ignorant in that matter. Like this, where am I going to find this information? Even if you go look online for menstruation, it doesn't tell you PMDD. I literally have to type in PMDD what you guys wrote just to find this. This is not something not common. Sorry, I sound upset. I'm not upset. I think I'm more just frustrated as a no, woman. We love- it's good <laughs> I'm, I'm we should be angry about this yes because there's a lot of women out there that are suffering and even then if you're not the woman that's suffering but you know you're part of the family member in the relationship mm-hmm. they can understand the dynamic of that person's personality or stuff like it's not them and then you can be more supportive and you can understand that's not like it's just you're leaving a huge amount of um human beings that are women that are dealing with this stuff and they don't know and then yeah. they're being taken in well, not taking advantage of it, but they're being not abused. What's the one for just being looked I, down on? Like, so yeah, say it. Sorry, you guys talk. Yeah. I gotta stop talking. I, I feel miserable. Why I'm, so, I'm so pleased that you're feeling this passionate about it because this is what it needs. And you know, one statistically, one in 20 women or menstruators uh, assigned female at birth have PMDD, but statistically, you know. That's the that's the number, but Ali and I would believe that it's significantly higher. I think it's like percent. Yes, of course, because nobody wants to talk about it. Women, who no. are you going to talk to? They can't talk to their mother, or their <laughs> mother's like, "What are you talking about? Just take a pill." They can't do a doctor. Doctor, look at you, like, "Are ah, you okay, baby? You're okay." It's just one of those bad days because people just patronize you. Sorry, yeah. I'm, okay, go ahead. Yeah, who, who says? Who says to their friend? Well, you know, yesterday I was standing on a bridge and I wanted to jump off it, but today I feel really great. <laughs> Who, yeah, there, there is no space for that in, unless, you know, unless you know, unless everybody knows that PMDD exists and is a recognized disorder and go, oh, okay, hang on. How do you feel? Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. It's crazy. I think I go back to my original question. How do we cure? Is it curable? Is it like, we need to help these people. Like I'm not, I personally have been fortunate not like based on what you guys are saying, I haven't experienced it. Granted there's days I want to knock my boyfriend out. <laughs> but you know, those, those are those days. Those are days I know that I'm PMS. Like I'm having like one of those bad days. I'm like, it's just one of those days. Just give me a break. <laughs> and I'm like, oh baby, come, come. But okay. Sorry, Ali, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah. So cure, maybe not. Okay, yeah. Um but the, there are things that can ease it. There are things that can help. So, you know, some people will go and, and get the, the pill. So hormone, um, sort of hormonal pill helps some people. Does that help others? A bit hit and miss. Um, so people get progesterone only pill. Yeah. And lots of people with PMDD have a progesterone intolerance. So they go on the pill because it's the first line of treatment and feel worse. Yeah. Like honestly, PM, I'm gonna go a little personal. I just got off the pill because I'm just like I felt like shit every for the past few months, even mm. for the year. And I'm just like I don't feel good. Like I feel sick sometimes. I feel annoyed. I could tell like my 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 hormones flu- fluctuate, and I'm just like I want to knock this boyfriend out. But I'm like then there's days <laughs> I'm like ah. So when you say the pill, I just don't. I guess you're right. It depends on certain people, but I don't think it should be the number one. 
go to to resolve our problems. There should be more done to look at yeah. how to how her hormones work as a woman and how it can affect us because mm-hmm. it also affects your mentality and how you. Yeah. Cor- Sorry. Yeah, go, Ali. Go, Emily. Go. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then the next thing you could try is an antidepressant. Okay. Um, so an SSRI, um, usually at a low dose, um, and that can be taken either cyclically, so just within the luteal phase, or continuously. Um, from there, there's kind of you, you'd probably get a referral then to to a gynecologist, and you can look at things like their chemical menopause. Um, and then the next sort of thing after that would be looking at at surgery so some people have hysterectomies or have their ovaries removed um yeah mm. and from from the people that I've spoken to who've, who've gone gone down that route it has it has helped um so yeah there's mm. yeah there's there's always that option but I guess it it feels quite extreme doesn't it to to kind of go and and, and jump in and have surgery and actually lots of people find that there are a lot of barriers to getting to that point and getting that treatment um for for various reasons um but I think certainly in the U.S. I've heard of lots of people who've really struggled to get to that point um in terms of what insurance will cover um you know how many children they've had already what age they are um all sorts of things that that sort of stop um women having the choice over their over their own body um so yeah that's 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 a whole other topic um Mm. but yeah there's lots of barriers there for people getting treatment there's also kind of diet and um more kind of natural ways that you can manage it as well exercise is great um you know yeah managing your diet is good kind of trying to keep a bit of a stable blood sugar um because i think the the spikes with um with with sugar can yeah they mess your hormones around a little bit <laughs> so yeah um caffeine as well is another one that lots of people tend to tend to avoid caffeine and alcohol um and yeah, I mean, we, we were speaking to a naturopath the other week about it. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert in that, but there are natural ways that you can you can kind of tackle it as well. Excuse my face, think, so discuss. Go ahead. Because when, when you say cure, like the reason we say kind of no is because I don't think it's a, I mean, we don't think it's a cure. Like having to have your internal organs taken out is not a cure. It is, it's removing the issue. And, you know, most a good chunk of, of menstruators who have PMDD and have the final, you know, full hysterectomy, ovaries, womb, cervix quite often uh, taken out, um, do feel a lot better. But then they have to navigate uh, HRT because they're in the menopause suddenly, like smash, here's your menopause. And this is happening. You know, we know people happening, having it in their early 20s because life is so unbearable. They're like spending life in and out of um you know, hospital, because they're at risk to themselves and others during two weeks of the month. Um, so it's it's not a cure, but it is it is a final destination that can actually help massively, massively, like life changingly. But there's something really wrong with the system where that is a person's final choice that they have to remove their internal organs to, to make their lives livable, to be able to live, because there is, you know, if we said 70% of people have suicidal ideations, 30% attempt suicide, there's a real life risk. You are, your life is in danger having PMDD, let alone the impact, the losses, the damage that gets happening, that happens. <laughs> when you're talking, I've also heard of women that have had like excessive bleeding, you know, they've mm-hmm. had like mass panic and stuff like that. And they've, They've had to do what you mentioned, like fully, um, fully taking out everything out of their body. But during that time period, even when I've heard some of you mention that PMDD has never come up on the table. It's always been like, oh, she's just having, she has really bad periods and stuff like that. And she has, and when you mentioned that some people can't go to work, I remember somebody saying that how they are stuck that bedridden and they can't move and stuff like that. And I've never heard of PMDD until today. And I'm just wondering. Like, did the doctors say this? Do doctors are the doctors are aware of these words? And 
Okay, I'll just be quiet. So mm-hmm. for others that want to learn more, Ali and Emily, um, in respect to and um, reaching out to you guys or even following you guys, what's the best platform to reach you guys out on? Uh, Instagram, I think. Okay. Where we are most prolific because we, we're, I mean, we're on Facebook, but neither of us really know how to use it. <laughs> I love your honesty. <laughs> So yeah, we need to we need to get ourselves like um, a, a, a student volunteer or something who wants to come and get educators in technology because we're not we're not very good at that. But yeah, Instagram we've got a website as well. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I think I have to kind of come back to you when you're saying about doctors. You know, would doctors say this? And the the terrifying reality is, in spite of this being a recognised disorder, you know, in the UK it's it's got there's like um, I don't know what the word what what is nice Ali it's like the um it's like a guidelines really for for treatment so it's evidence-based um yeah clinical it informs the entire NHS right it's like it's yeah. like yeah so all of all of the yeah any treatment that you receive in the NHS should be guided by the nice yeah the nice guidelines that's like the gold standard treatment and so, you know, it exists in this. This is a real, real, real thing. Not just, you know, something that a, a bunch of, of women have decided they have. It's a real thing. And yet, I think I think something like 90% of our followers, we asked about, you know, have you been dismissed by a doctor because your blood tests came back, you know, showing no kind of differences? And they said, yes. 90% have been dismissed. Whereas a doctor who knows about PMDD knows that nothing comes up on a blood test. It's not about hormone deficiencies. It's not too much or too little. It's the way that your brain interprets those fluctuations. And that's just messed up. It's really messed up that people, people are having to search on, a, on a, a PMDD organization's website for a provider in their local area. And by local, I mean, people are moving from different states in, this, in America to to go and see someone because nobody knows about it no one knows how to treat it because you normally for pmdd do you get it before menopause or can you get it during menopause so you get pmdd from you can get it from the point you start your periods okay so some people have it for for life or you know for, for for their menstrual life some people can have it it comes after pregnancy or you know, quite often it, if people who had it had severe PMS, it then exacerbates and becomes PMDD. Some people get it in perimenopause, which is the bit before your menopause, because menopause is like, mm, you've had a year of no periods, we're done. Perimenopause can last 10 years. Yes, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so sure I'm, heard. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> like you guys don't understand. Nobody tells women there's like, oh, if it wasn't for me just even talking to you guys, I don't think I would know half of the stuff. I'll be walking around clueless 90% of the time about what's happening to my body. Mm. And I feel bad for the ones that actually go through these symptoms and they're just going around in circles and trying to figure out and they're getting no way. Doctor says there's nothing wrong with me, this and this. I'm just like, Lord, girl, I feel for you. And I'm like, I'm one of the fortunate ones. No, let me keep being fortunate. Okay, let me keep being fortunate. But um. I appreciate this conversation with you guys because I think it needs to have, this needs to be done more. Like, I've mm. never, yeah. Okay, let me stop. Ali and Emily, you have me speechless, like in a good way, because all I feel like doing is just yelling up on top of a mountain saying, people, there's PMDD out there. If you're suffering, find help. I literally want to do that. This is how- you can do that. Please like, do that. Like, it's just, it's, I think the reason why I feel passionate about this is be, at this point when talking to you guys is, I've met people that have been bedridden. I've met people that, you know, you've heard bipolar, like people, oh, she's just going through something. And then you listen to you guys talk, it kind of helps me my ignorance and my bias at that point that maybe that person's not really bipolar. They're just going through something based on their hormones. And we don't know how to navigate that because nobody sat us down and said, okay, this is your time of the period. You may experience this. This is how you can deal with it. What can you do about this? No conversation like that to help women like not even like me just to educate myself or even mothers that would have daughters that would have that in the future. Right. And fathers and brothers. Yes. But some of them don't want to talk about getting a pad. So I don't know how we're going to, how we're going to help them, but it's true. Like I was raised by my father 
Um, unfortunately, my mom died early. And you're right. Like, it's not a conversation piece that men talk about, let alone women. And then you also look at cultural issues too. Like there's certain cultures that don't even want to bring it up or have it or think it's taboo. So yeah. you have, like anybody's in what you're doing, you have an uphill battle, 100%, 100%. Like I'm not, like even just talking to you. And I want to say um, that thank you for this conversation. I, I am, I am, yeah, I've learned a lot. Uh, I look forward to having you guys again because we're going to be talking more about this. And if anybody's watching or listening again, um, Ali and Emily, I know you said you had a website. Can you just let us know what the website, if anybody's listening to you, so they can visit your website? I will have it in the show notes, but just verbally as well. Yeah. So it's uh, the pmddcollective.com. Okay. Appreciate that. Anything yeah. else you guys want to add before I let you guys go? I'm, I'm just going to go home. Ali and I have like a catchphrase oh. that we always oh, yeah. on. <laughs> Go on, Ali. What do we say? Crack your cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And yeah. Because if you're yeah. tracking your cycle, including your mood, maybe you'll pick up that the, there's a pattern, you know? Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, just just for generally learning about yourself and being more connected with your cycle, it's it's important. Oh, don't yeah. worry. We're, we're, you guys are coming back to talk about that. We're coming back to talk about that. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. You, if you, you guys got whoever's watching or listening, you better come back and listen to this because... I don't think anybody's ever taught us how to track our cycle as well. I don't remember mm-hmm. being tracked. I just know it was like 28 days or 30 days and you wish and you hope it landed at 2020. 20. Like that's it. I just remember doing that. That's all. Mm-hmm. To this day, I, unfortunately, I still do that. That's all I do. <laughs> There's nothing else I can do. But I think I'm um, having a conversation with you guys on how to do it would be really beneficial at any age at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So ladies, thank you for this conversation. Thank you. And thank you for really caring because it's like, why not? Weird, this, you know, listen to you talk. Like, why would I not care? Like, you have to care. Okay. All right. Sorry, ladies. Yeah. Okay. It's a, big, it's a big deal. But yeah, we're just, every person that we tell means that, you know, there's one possible more person to know and it can be passed on. So it's a big, it's a big deal. And Great. we're really grateful for you giving us this opportunity to like, Shout a bit about it. Yes, Thank you, ladies. I'm just going to start. We're glad to have you join us. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, share with anyone that needs to be empowered and inspired. And don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of Health Young Way Podcast. Have a good day, you guys.